Good morning and welcome to Monday. Amen. So we are in the Word today, but last um, message that's getting delivered to our YouTube channel right now, uh, Sunday and yesterday we, we talked about a change of heart. Now, I went and I've looked up several verses that I posted up with that YouTube video uh, on a change of heart. And, and I, I really think that, that what has been on Randy's uh, heart and mind uh, is the change of heart. It, it, it's a heart yeah. issue. It's, it's about the heart. Um, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. And so she's going to find me the, the verse that says, Create in me a new heart. Uh, and, but first, <laughs> before we do that, we're going to pray. So, bow your heads. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us. I pray that you would bless your word, God, that it might bring change in our life. Help the seed of your word to be planted in fertile soil so that it might grow into a strong tree of faith in our life. And help us to live for you in everything that we do in word or deed. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, we're going to talk about Romans chapter uh, 14, I believe, last week as we were looking into to basically almost all of Romans, the beginning of how you deal with uh, other people. It comes down to whatsoever things you do in word or deed, do all to the glory and honor of God. That is a great, great, great concept. Whatever you do, do all for the glory and honor of God. Amen. So if you're going to work, work, work as if working for the Lord. If you're going to build something, build it as though you're building it for the Lord. If you're going to fix something, fix it as though you're fixing it for the Lord. Amen. If you're going to write a story, write the story as though you're writing it for the Lord. If you're going to paint a picture, paint the picture, draw the picture, create the art as if you're doing it for the Lord. Amen. If you're going to talk to somebody and be compassionate and visit with somebody and fellowship with somebody, do it as if you are doing it for the Lord. This is what, what we need. We need to change of heart. We, we in, in America, need a change of heart. For the Christian people, we need to change of heart. I'm hearing sound, and it might be coming off of my, uh, my phone here. Because I think I'm hearing myself. It's muted now. We'll see if that fixes it. It's kind of distracting. You know how how uh, squirrels know. distract me. Um, for Christians, we need a change of heart to 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 what's what's coming out of our mouth. Um, me griping and complaining with you isn't going to help the situation. But if I continually watch the news and, and, and turn on WFTV and turn on uh, Channel 13 News and I turn on Fox News or I watch CNN News or whatever, whatever I'm watching, uh, you're getting bombarded constantly by this, that, and other thing. I mean, every headline on almost every website has the huge banner of coronavirus. Um, that's going into our hearts and then that's what's going to come out of our mouth. Uh, Randy spends uh, her, most of the night listening to scripture verses. And if you ever wonder why she speaks out of Psalms so much, it's because Psalms is a great <laughs> book to listen to at night. Um, if you uh, want to know an easy way to listen to it, is it's this simple. Say, Alexa, open version Bible. Alexa, read the book of Psalms. Now, if anybody was sitting at home and that just opened up her, an app, it's called, <laughs> just ask her to open Version Bible and then pick a book or pick a chapter and read it. And, and, and it'll play. Sometimes there's a big pause between chapters and you yeah. think like, did it stop? And sometimes it might stop five or six chapters in, but sometimes it keeps reading. But hey, that's a free way to listen to the word mm -hmm. at night. And, and most of the time, if I say read Romans, I'll fall asleep before it finishes. If I say mm -hmm. read Ephesians, I'll fall asleep before it finishes. And at least then it's going into our, 
our, our heart and into our mind. Mm -hmm. Last night we were watching a movie. We were watching the first The Hobbit with Bilbo Baggins. And it got to the scene to where they fell down in the cave and all the goblins and everything were, were taking them. And, and, and the camera panned to the Goblin King. Now, I remember the Goblin King from watching the movie before. But I turned off the TV and Randy's like, did it just turn off or did you turn it off? I said, I turned it off. I said, I'm gonna go to sleep and the last thing I wanna see is some big, big, <laughs> ugly, snot pussy, ugly thing getting imprinted on my mind while I'm going to sleep because that can lead to, to crazy dreams, you know? So I turned it off and uh, told, told Alexa to turn on the Bible, New Version Bible, so that mm -hmm. I could listen to the scripture <laughs> instead because what goes into your heart is what's gonna come out of your mouth. So if you see people who are letting things out of their mouth that, that you know are wrong and, and you're uncomfortable with uh, and they can't seem to just shut up about it, um, sorry to use it that, that phrase that way, but they need their heart cleaned. Now, a pack of gum here. And here's the thing that the world wants to do. The world wants to take a pack of gum and that way, what you say will at least smell sweet. And this is the deception. It's still garbage that's coming out as you're breathing out, but something artificially has come and made it sound sweet. Mm -hmm. That is nothing but mm -hmm. deception and manipulation. Uh, to try to take something that is not pure and make it acceptable. The way of the enemy is to make you disobey God, but make you think that you're doing what God would want. It started all the way back to the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. when he started to get Eve to question God and question whether, whether they could eat of that tree or not. It started so often that throughout the entire Old Testament, we have people that think and thought they were doing what they were supposed to do, but they weren't. Mm -hmm. uh, even into the New Testament with, with the Sadducees and the Pharisees, uh, the Apostle Paul, they all thought they were doing God's will. Paul was sure he was doing God's will. But you know what? It wasn't. Paul knew God's word. He didn't realize that there was a, a shift that had taken place. That Jesus was the Messiah. And Jesus did come to bring life. And Jesus did fulfill the scriptures. He didn't realize that. And he thought that what Jesus was doing was wrong. That what his followers were doing was wrong that they were twisting the scriptures and they were doing wrong and they were, they were promoting a man. And, and that resulted in him having such an anger against the early church that he pursued them to throw them in jail and have them put to death and to kick them out of towns uh, until he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, that brought change Amen. in his life. This is what I was talking about yesterday morning on Sunday at service is that change needs to happen. You need to have Jesus in your heart. Now, if you're listening to this and I say this often, but if you're listening to this and that seems like a funny thing to say and you don't understand, then Let's just start off with you simply afterwards, close your eyes, bow your head, talk to God like you would your dad or your mom and you were trying to get something from them, like being able to spend the night at a friend's house or get 20 bucks to go to the movies when you were a kid. Just talk to God like that and ask him just to show you what it means to have Jesus in your heart. Help him open, open that door to your heart. Open, open up and say, God, I, it, I, I don't know what this thing is that they're talking about, but I, I, I need to understand it. I want it. 
You see, because we run through life with a, a hollow spot in our desires, in our hearts, that needs fulfillment. And we look for fulfillment in, in to fill that spot in our life, that void, that emptiness, that gap in our life where something just seems like nothing seems to make us happy. We're never really content. We jump from hobby to hobby to hobby, and we do and we do and we do, but all along we're just trying to find happiness. I mean, isn't that what, that's what most people are trying to do. They're trying to find out what, what makes you happy. And God says, I put that spot in your heart, and that piece of the puzzle is a piece that only Jesus can fill. Jesus died on the cross that you might have life, and not just life, but abundant life. If your life is not full of love and joy and peace and kindness, then put that puzzle into your heart by talking to him, and he will help you to understand. You are wonderfully, wonderfully made. And God loves you so much, but he does want you to live your life for him. Mm -hmm. And when God puts a calling on your life and you run away from that calling, you might end up like Jonah. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. And there's some YouTube messages on that. But I just wanna say, ask Jesus into your heart let God bring change in your life. Randy's going to read Create in Me a New Heart. Yep. Did you find that? Yep, I did. She's going to read that real quick. And But before we read that, well, I'm going to let her go ahead and read that real quick. What does it say? In Psalms 51, 10. So 50, Psalms, Psalms 51, 10. 10. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Renew a right spirit in you. Create in you a clean heart. That's what this nation needs. That's what the church needs. That's what every big church needs, every small church needs. Every pulpit needs to, to, to preach that God needs to create a new heart in people because that'll fix all, all of our problems in life. That, that's the cure. We are also gonna make a quick announcement. We have a concert gonna happen at church and seating is very limited due to the- uh, Physical distancing. Physical distancing that we're doing. Randy doesn't like to call it social distancing because you can still socialize from six feet apart. Yes. And you need to socialize. You need to not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Saturday evening, six o'clock, yeah. Intercession City Church of God. It's right past Point Santa Boulevard where the speed limit drops down across from the Circle K. You'll see the sign on the road. If you can make it and come down and visit us, if you haven't seen the church in a while, come visit us. Yes. Um, if you have not been in the church in a while, you need to come see because it's not the same on the inside as it was a, a year ago. There's been, there's been a remodeling done and uh, thank you to the crew that helped us out with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that Saturday, it'll also be live streamed. So yes, you can join in. It is the, um, the yeah. concert is kind of Southern gospel. Yeah. And what do you know about the group? I know that they won a vocal award. A vocal award? Um, they're good. They're good. They love the Lord. They do this as a ministry. Yeah. So um, it will, we will be taking a love offering because they yeah. are not charging anything to come. No. Um, they're doing this out of their love of the Lord, yes. but they do have expenses. This is yeah. part of the, the way they make their living. So we will be taking a love offering. Mm -hmm. But please, let me know if you're coming and how many are coming um, because I do have a list that I'm, I'm writing down so that I know the seating. We'll be going probably on Wednesday and setting up a seat so I'll know exactly yes. how many spots I'll have. Yep. Um, but it, I got a feeling it's going to fill up. So just yep. <laughs> look It's kind of Southern, Southern, Southern Gospel. So look at our it's Facebook good. page. There's a sign right it's, there. Uh, the Groves Ministry, Family Ministry. Mm -hmm. So they're a very good group. Very yep. good. We've known them for a long time personally. Yep. Um, they love God. They love God. Yep. They used to come so, in St. Cloud Church of God. Yeah. So now they're coming to Intercession City Church of God. But I but, want to share another scripture. Go but ahead. we're gonna we're gonna close in prayer and then Randy's going to because I want to pray with you really quick. Okay. Um and then you can close in that. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us. Father, if anything that I have said, Lord, 
uh, touches somebody's heart, I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus that you would just begin to work on their heart. Work on our hearts. Work on my yes. heart. Lord, I, I ask you to work on my heart. If there's any areas in my heart that I have closed off and sealed to you, I pray that you would break that seal, that we might live for you. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us and bless Randy as she shares one more little portion in Jesus' name. Amen. This is in Proverbs 16. It says, The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. You know, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. So as believers in Christ, what are we to do? Depart from evil. How do we know what evil is? Is by reading the word of God and seeing what he says is good and what he says is bad. Um, he created the heavens and the earth. I think he knows what he's talking about when he says what's good and what's bad. <laughs> Rather than man that one day this is this way, another day it's that way. One day eating this is good for you. Maybe two years down the road, oh, that is not good for you to eat. So we flip-flop as mankind, but God does not. Amen. So he is the steady guideline. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So trust him. Amen. Keep your heart pure. Yes. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. You know, Malachi chapter 316 says then they that feared the lord spake upon often one to another and the lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the lord and that thought upon his name you know when we gather together like matthew said the assembling of ourselves together um, it's important because that's how we talk to each other about the lord it gives us that opportunity this way we love being with you guys in the morning but we can't you can't Talk to us, <laughs> unless we're looking at the phone. Morning, Nicole. So, good morning, Nicole. We want to be able to, to communicate and express, and that's what you do when you gather together. It says, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I wake up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serves him. You know, it says, Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God, and him that serveth him not. Guard your heart. Fellowship one with another. It is so important. If you're close, come and fellowship with us at church. We're so casual. Um, we walk with the Lord, but we're casual in the sense that we don't expect you to come dressed up. You know, as long as you're dressing modest, <laughs> that's fine. It can be your shorts and a t-shirt. I wear um, blue jeans and a polo pretty often. Yep. Yeah, it's about the heart. That's Amen. what God cares about is the heart. Amen. We love y'all, and that's what we always say. Keep a praise song, song in your heart, heart and rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. always. And, and again, again, I, I say, say rejoice. rejoice. Psalms 5110. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye.